really are, oh, how can I say this and keep my day job? Um, <laughs> anything I've done from translating, publishing, putting the words on the page, mentoring, this was all done without the literary organisations who represent Wales. My biggest barrier at the moment is that I translated it into Spanish. So the maximum sales I could possibly make within Wales is three billion if everyone bought my book in whatever English or Welsh. <laughs> but who's gonna, well, how do I reach the 450 million Spanish speakers out here if our literary organizations do not distribute outside of Wales and those funding them will not come to the table? So my biggest barrier at the moment is the limits within Wales. I mm. currently have no choice of either go out of Wales to do this or do it myself, but I do have a child to look after. So my biggest barriers are still there until ministers listen. Okay, so that's, that's a note for us all to, to lobby for that support. So I'm gonna to come to Ippi now. Um, can you tell us, Ippi, about your experience in the music industry um, and, and more about you and what you do? Hello everyone, um, it's great to be here. Um, I'm Ify Wobi, I'm a pianist, composer, producer, musical director, and mm. uh, BBC Radio Wales A-list artist. Um, I studied all throughout university schooling and education music performance, and I graduated in 2015 full-time on performing and composing in areas around Wales, from Wales Millennium Centre to festivals such as Boomtown and Sless Oil Festival, uh, just been performing in those areas. Um, so a bit about um, the experiences in the music industry. Um, well, about my work, actually. I, I published my first album, Illuminate, in 2019. I, <laughs> I don't sing, but I compose all the beat, the instrumentation, the tune, and I work with singers um, to kind of voice my ideas. Um, I had to do three jobs to do my music. Oh, literally, it was such a ride, but I wouldn't do anything else. You know, when it's that passion inside of you and you just feel like this is what you're meant to do. Um, so that was kind of a calling for me. And my experiences, let's, let's have a look. Um, it was quite difficult with my experiences as in COVID pandemic, um, when, for musicians particularly, we couldn't earn, we couldn't make a living, we were constricted at home and we couldn't do our job. Um, it, was, it was in this time that I soul searched and went back to my roots and made African R&B music. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, in that time, it was hard to kind of put yourself out there when you're constricted in your own home. So I soul searched it. I uh, made my first track thinking about you featuring Jimmy Adels. I reached out to him on Instagram. He's got like over a million streams wow. on um, Spotify with his track reads. So, you know, one thing you have to do with the music industry is put yourself out there. No one's going to do the path for you or any industry. You have to make your own path and you have to make your own, um, you know, pathway to where you want to be. So I put out a call out. I said, this is what I do. This is the beat I made thinking about you. What do you think of listening to it? He actually responded. <laughs> that was insane. Like he's a blue tick verified on that on Instagram. And it was like, yeah, can I check it out? Um, so we had a phone call. We literally discussed, he heard the beat in Nigeria. I was in Wales, so we were kind of communicating that way. And uh, yes, he actually liked it. I was like, oh. I was dream, like Jimmy after a million streams, you know, on Spotify. This guy's actually saying, yes, what? Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, um, he wrote the lyrics, the, um, the lyrics and the rest of it. We did it within a week. I submitted it on introducing, because that's what you need to do in the music industry. You have to put, like you say, put yourself out there. I learned from experts such as uh, BBC Horizons, Beck and Elvin, that you, introducing is a way to get your work out there mm -hmm. and um, for it to be exposed on a wider audience. So I did that um, and 
yeah, it got A-listed, <laughs> which was unreal. Unreal. So thank you very much. Experience is not difficult. I mean, difficult, but it's, I'm, I'm grateful. And um, yeah, grateful to the the uh, uh, iPad mic, yeah? Okay. Apologies, everyone. Um, this is the first time we tried to do a hybrid event, so it's difficult, and I, I wanted to make sure that the, uh, the little iPad mic was on. So hello to everyone online. Um, so turning to Kara again, um, can you tell us how you got involved in the arts? What drew you to it, and what barriers have you faced? And how did Theo help you overcome them? So I've been involved in the arts pretty much my entire life. I was in stagecoach, the theatre company. I was extra on casualty, a few of those CBC shows and little things like that when I was growing up. But I felt like, I, I didn't mention as well, I'm an artist by trade, that's what I'm passionate about. But I felt like in these industries the whole time, I was always, you know, they were in the violence and I was always the only black person, if not one of two. And that experience, seeing, you know, the rehearsal space and seeing the teachers as well, and never feel like you can see yourself in that. It felt difficult and it felt like I was only picked for the when they needed the black person. For example, in Casualty, I was an extra on an episode where immigrants were coming over in a boat and their boat was crashed. And conveniently, I was picked for that. And after that, I never worked with casualty again. They never asked me to do anything for them again. And I was never really an extra in anything else. And for example, in a musical, I was um, in Hairspray. I was one of the black characters and I was put on the singing role. I'm not a singer. And you know, it's very convenient that I was chosen for these things. And I felt like I was picked for these things in particular. So, you know, after a while, when I turned a bit older, I kind of redirected myself and thought, you know what, art maybe isn't for me. Maybe I'm not the right person for that because of these things, you know what I mean? So I was like, okay, cool, let me think about science, let me think about things like that. I'm not a scientist. I really fooled myself into thinking that. And, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and then after, a while, after a while of me trying that out, I thought, you know, I need to go back to my roots. And that's when, um, over lockdown, I really started to hone in my art a lot. And that's when I found, um, I was on the youth board in Wales Millennium Centre and that's when I found Cynthia Thomas and she, she's the creative director of FIA and she asked me to be in a research development project called Landed Bot and I was 17 years old going into this project had no idea and that space really honed my creative mind I felt like experience to any art space that I've ever been in because I had people of colour all around me telling me that you're an artist, you can be whatever you want. And I had them, those kind of inspirational people to look up to and had idols for the first time, I think, in my life, do you know what I mean? So yeah, after that, my work with you was kind of escalated and I felt like, um, and I became a creative associate and I bring that different perspective to the company as like a young black woman in Wales, giving them that different perspective. So yeah, thank you very much. Cara, and it just shows the power of mentors and having having you, you know that phrase you can't be what you can't see mm -hmm. and we all need people that we can look up to carve a path for us um so brilliant thank you over to nicole again um so nicole yeah. can you, what barriers have you faced getting involved um, in performing um so so um Basically, um, I need a time to people for um, um, to um, um, to to um, 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 understand, stand me, me and that. Do you have a mentor as well? No, no, apologies. That's all of yeah. Yeah. The group supported you. Yeah. Brilliant. And how does um how does it make you feel to perform as Flossy Sunshine? Um, it makes me makes me make me feel 
So I'm going to come back to Jess again now. Um, you, you've talked really about what publishing companies need to do. But I'm going to ask you what advice you would give your 16-year-old self. <laughs> oh, well, I didn't say anything about the publishing companies. They've yet to publish Black Authors in Wales, but a oh, 16-year-old okay. self, um, I probably would have told myself that the high all of the experts don't actually know what they're talking about. Because my day job, I work in decolonizing and history. Mm. I hated history. I hated it so much in school, but now I'm a historian in the daytime. So um, I would have told myself this, there's a reason why you failed your GCSEs. There's a reason this wasn't for you, you know, because mm. later I would excel. So there is institutional whackness everywhere because Back then, in like the 90s, mid 90s, Cardiff was like, where you're from, I was the only black kid in the class. It was crazy um, that I didn't even know. It was to George Floyd to tell me like, you're actually experiencing all of this racism, let your hair out. So I would have told myself what George Floyd would have meant and told myself to mouth off at 16 and not 33. <laughs> so that's it. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I'm going to ask you the same question, Ify. What, what advice would you give your 16-year-old self? Oh, well, this is a good question, actually. I mean, for me, I would advise myself to not expect things to come to you. Build that profile for yourself, that social media account, self-promote. Put your work out there and have that belief in what you're called to do. Um, like you may get disagreements, not everyone may be on the same page, but if you know inside this is what you're meant to do, this is your calling, go for it, and you have a consistent work ethic, the right opportunities will come to you, and you will make it. No one's going to pave the way for you, you've got to do it yourself mm. at 60 years old. question and I'm going to open it up to the audience shortly so do um, think of your questions for the panel. Cara, what, would, what advice would you give your 16 year old self? I think, sorry, it's okay. um, I think I would tell my 16 year old self, um, I think to be the change that I want to see because I was 16 in 2020 so obviously during the Black Lives Matter re-emergence and I think, like me and a lot of black people, were dealing with a lot of emotions then, like dealing with sadness, dealing with anger, dealing with frustration, all these things, and trying to navigate those emotions at 16, it, it was very difficult. I think I went through a very angry, rebellious stage in my life when I was like, I don't care about anything, this is all messed up. And I think trying to put that into something great, into something good, was a challenge for me. And just to stick on that and to put it into something great, like I've been doing now, I think that's what I would tell myself. What advice to you, Nicole? What advice you give to a programmer and and to 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 see see a that group in person. It's a Be very brave and patient. Okay, be brave and patient. 
to open up to questions now. If any of the audience would like to ask any of the panel a question. On there. <laughs> Hello. Well, first of all, thank you so much. I'm in awe. It's really, really amazing. I can barely miss. So, <laughs> fantastic. I'm also struck by your And I think when you talk about barriers, that seems to be one of your motivating factors. The joy of bringing you just gives you that assistance. Um, I'd like to know more about um, how you feel the resilience to open up those spaces, which you saw also at a very early age were close to you. And yet, not only did you open up, you redefined what the space should look like. And that's, I think, for all of us, inspiring and really impressive. So, I'd love to know what you do. Thank you. I'm going to start with um, I'm going to start with Ifby this time. What keeps you resilient? That's a really great question and um, really challenging because being resilient um, in, in the face of the industry is tough. When there's all these critics against you, when you're like of color as well, you're a minority yourself, and then going against like, for example. Um, there's, for you know, for example, in in my in my area, um, there's not really support for like labels of black music. Um, many many labels are down the white rock route or singer songwriter route, and it's quite difficult to be nurtured in that way. And that that's tough to kind of be resilient in that front but it's just to have that support that grounding and that belief in yourself just reaffirm yourself this is what i'm you once you know your passion that is what then builds from there and also having support network to build you up you need destiny helpers as well to kind of um get you to where you want to be and a strong foundation. It's my family for me, also my faith as well. I turn to that, so, um, and other people. So a good foundation for the future. Thank you. Jess, how do you keep yourself resilient? Oh, I think I'm ready to quit now. I've, I've told everyone the problem. <laughs> I have, like, if ministers don't step in, if they're still funding it, if there's still an issue, and I'm not being helped with the, I've got the solution, but I'm next to giving up. But I will say, what got me from um, having no qualifications, no GCSEs, no A-levels, to now having two degrees, I think it's like surviving in Wales. So being a single mum, it's very difficult, especially when you go for uni. Surviving domestic violence, a narcissist, you know, someone who nearly killed me, I can handle the publishing industry very easily. So people see what happened in the last two years. They don't know the battles of the last, and this could have been present, uh, prevented had there been just simple representation. If I had another option or uh, some kind of help, the woman who gave me help was my lecturers and the university. So. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you for yeah. sharing that. Thank yes. you. That's another thing to tack on to this is what, what as organisations like When Wales, we can do to improve things and break down the barriers. Cara, tell us how you remain resilient. I think it's exactly like what you were saying, that it's using those barriers to your advantage in a way and using them to motivate you, because honestly, that's all you can do. Otherwise, it's like they will tell you apart, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So yeah, no, it's about using their barriers. And like, I think that's what a lot of art is, is about using the horrible things that happen to you and turn them into something beautiful. So yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> as well it's beautiful and um how do you nicole stay resilient um so 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 um we we do do 
We we are proud, proud of who we are. I think you're also part of something called Gig Buddies. I am. Yeah, which also is is a really great network, isn't it? Yeah. Um. Um. um we read a friend, friend, and skin with wet magic is people with 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 love 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 and did this uh, set a bit of energy is a uh, some who who can can do go go and um, um, and have fun in that brilliant <laughs> that sounds good um and we can obviously also come to your your next gig can't we we yeah. need to know when that is <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah Tell us. Um, um, so, so, um, our net, net, net structure at Mars, so, so, um, is on the 10th of December a new, new book called, um, um, in the room, whatever, and, and, and we're also, so you, you can follow us on Facebook, Facebook, and we wait got a website as well. <laughs> And sensation makes makes me make me feel happy. Is there another question from the audience? How are we doing? Oh yes, uh, Rahina.
Who'd like to take that one first? Just to overcome barriers as a black person or as a person of color, how do you overcome those barriers like racism and all of that? Mm -hmm. Discriminatory patterns. Sure. You don't, I don't know if we've overcome it yet. Yeah. I mean, we've seen yeah. complaints. We've seen we've, we've, we've submitted complaints mm. for a range when it's like a child losing his finger in school or child queue. We're in a complaints procedure and we'll be there for years, probably. So I've just had to move my son from school, for example, in my particular field. Just existing is problematic because I'm not getting any help from the literary industry. So I suppose I haven't overcome, I've just kept going. But what I will say for anyone else who might not identify like me, but comes from a different background, um, I think they should, everyone needs to realize that their personal kinevin, let's call it, is expertise that no one else has in Wales. And, just trust in your own expertise. Even if you weren't taught it in school, your family taught you that. You're an expert in, the, in, in what is missing in society. And um, watch out for racial gatekeepers because not all skin folk are necessarily kin folk, but we have to speak about that. There are people who get in the room and we'll shut that door after them and we call them out, you know, and, and that's what I'm doing. I probably burn my career as I create it with my mouth, but that's fine because there will be people behind me who yeah. will go further than I would hope to go. Yeah. Sorry, that's a bit bleak. But... <laughs> um, that's a really great question, especially because we, a lot of us here are of colour. And we feel like a minority, you know, in our area when I can talk from my experience being in like the labels, like I said before, there's just kind of a genre specific set type that, um, you know, the, the industry experts go to, or, you know, not even just music, there's in doctor, you can, like black women should be on assessment panels. Mm not even black just women just black people should be at the top the head because they're so talented they're so like special i know so many artists that should be huge right now and we're not getting that you know we to overcome the racism and to overcome the obstructions the barriers it's just to be given a chance really just open up your mind and meet other people and just be more open-minded to kind of have a conversation and get it, get the talent out there, you know, for um, the diverse individuals. Thank you. Yeah, no, I think um, just echoing what you were saying about like calling people out if they have done wrong and things like that is so important, especially like, I think in an age where social media is rife and we're always calling people out, like I think doing it on a more less public face, like doing it more intimately would be, I think, more beneficial because doing it publicly just embarrasses people and it never achieves really anything. I think if you like, if your friend says anything that you think a bit, oh, it's a bit questionable, just put them aside and tell them, or if you don't know anything, just ask. And I think if we as people are like changing potentially our language and how we speak about things, for example, you know, calling um, people of colour or people of colour minorities. I feel like that minority word can be very um, oppressive in a way. And, you know, change that language potentially global majorities, because we are global, we are majority in, in the world, you know what I mean? So that changing your language like that, those subtle things can, you know, elevate us as people and make you suffer. Yeah. 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 like to answer the same question about um, what discrimination she has faced. Okay, okay, so, so um, when, when um, um, my work was, was yeah, yeah, and uh, go, go, um, um, my, my work was re, 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 
average drink drink in in spoon, spoons beam be baker because they they fought for um my my drank drank um um but but at right round in my express but I joke jokes on the internet and 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 they they check check me make me out of um but but I'm in the fine fine now. Oh, gosh, that's tough. Remember, when I will wear a piece spit it up for for four people. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. Have a question. Great question. So what do you hope for the future for you and for those that are going to follow you in the industry? Okay. Yes. Who would like to start with that? Um, maybe we'll go this way. I feel like um, I hope for the future. I think an important thing that I um, advocate for and strive for is, you know, I think Wales is, we, we see, we're seeing the progression of diverse faces in the media. And we see them you know, on the stage, but behind the scenes, we don't see them as often. We don't see people of color and diverse people at the top of the top of the hierarchy, let's say. I know I strive for the future for, to see more people like us, like me, in these top positions, because I think that's the catalyst for change. And that's where you really start to see change is having people at the top and not just having them as performers to be like, we are diverse. And that never really is the solution. So yeah, people at the top, I think that's the solution. Yeah. I, I have lost hope, as I said before, so, but I at least hope that the, the next authors that come through uh, will not have to be so mouthy and can just carry on and we'll, we'll be able to just get on with it, we won't have to do it all themselves, and I hope that schools can access the books that are out there in the Welsh language, these were there to, to keep the Welsh language alive and so Wales can travel around the world with our books. I hope that the infrastructure will be in place so that we can make something great in Wales. Okay. No, I just wanted to add something there as well. Like, I know you feel very hopeless and I know it can be hard, but at the same time, I feel like in a way, your like angst and your hopelessness in a way is going to motivate the people beneath you and it's going to motivate these young, uh, these young authors and stuff beneath you. So as much as you might feel hopeless, you're doing the work that they won't have to do. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> wow, what a question. Honestly, the hope I see, I want to see it, I want to see not in doctors like like what Ciara said at the top, you know, uh, black people that are you know successful doctors that are successful scientists. Do you know the contributions that black people have made and are under the surface, like the first stethoscope, the first they are under history. People, we should be elevated. We've got so much talent, so much potential. We just need to be given that chance to be on that stage. Same as everyone else. Absolutely. What, what gives you hope, Nicole? Um, 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 basically, the, uh, yeah, uh, we we will want to 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 do do a tour tour. I mean the 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 the
um, my, 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 my wish as um, um, we will talk for a big people to 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 do do such a big thing they they um, um, they enjoy more so do what you enjoy yeah <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone. Unless anyone has got any more questions, and I'm just giving everyone a chance to, if anybody wants to ask a question. But if not, we, we're going to shortly go for a break. So I think nobody is asking questions. Oh, I mean, there is. Does want to ask another question? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So, so, we need that support. We, and anyone like you know that has like help or can advise, please let's build a network for understand what's happening. So. Yeah. <laughs> just want to thank our brilliant panelists, all four of them. They have been absolutely brilliant and thought-provoking. We can't hope to solve all these issues um, alone. We are going to have to all work together, and that's one thing that WEN can really provide. So we can provide a network, connecting, uh, linking people up to try and help um, pr both promote artists from underrepresented groups, but also um, share our knowledge. And if you know a publisher, if you know a record producer, you know, we, we need to help elevate all of these incredible people on this panel. Um, and yeah, so a huge, huge thank you to you all for coming, putting yourself out there, for supporting when, and um, we will most definitely support you back. Thank you very much. We're gonna have a 15 minute break. Thank you.